Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're all well, fit and good and ready to take on this weekend. Before that, let's have a look at what we did last week. So last time round, we was working on episode 14, which was the farms. Now I know we have done some farms before, but it was the perfect timing to combine the two guest builds of Taser and Wick 4000. And by the sounds of the comments, you agreed and thought it worked out really well. I was really happy of how this all went together. And I learned a few different techniques along the way, which I will definitely be using to fill out some of that big open space on the island as time passes by. But that was last week. This week, we're gonna be working on something a little bit different, a little bit more exciting, in my opinion. We're gonna be working on this beautiful area by the Needles on the Isle of Wight, which is one of the beautiful little pleasure parks on the island. Now, if you're not a resident of the island or you have not visited before, the Needles is one of those very iconic locations on the island. It's very well known for the needle formation of rocks leading up to it. And it's one of those picturesque photos you tend to see a lot regarding the island. And what there is here is there is a little sort of pleasure park area with a few little attractions to bring people to this area. And the main part of this particular part of the island or this particular build is all about the colorful sands. Now, the island itself is known for these beautiful colorful sands. And on this particular part of the island, that is where you can go and get your glass ornament and fill it up with all different types of color sands that are all sort of formed on this part of the island. Now, I don't know the specifics of how this all forms into these beautiful colors. It's obviously something to do with the rock and the formations of how it all goes together. But it's a place I've been to many, many times. And I really, really wanted to replicate this area as best that I could. Um, not only because I know it like the back of my hand, but also I think it's a really interesting build to do on, on City Skylines, especially when we come to a very interesting point which you probably have already noticed from the thumbnail but the chairlifts are a very important part of this build and it's an again another iconic look of what you tend to see and you know about when you come to the island so the first part that we're laying down here i mean firstly i didn't record the very start of this episode just because it took a lot of time to do a bit of terraforming and put down the foundation so you would have noticed that we did jump in sort of probably half an hour's worth of build time prior to that. But that's the boring part out of the way. That was just laying down the foundation and choosing the correct roads and parking lots, etc. Nothing exciting was really done. You'll see that as we go along. So the first part here, this is pretty much just the coach parking entrance. We'll move on to the actual car parking area shortly after, but this is just the area where the um, buses and coaches come bringing in the uh, people of the outside coming to visit um, it's a again it's one of those locations where a lot of people come on their holidays or just to come and visit and see the fascinating sights that this area beholds now i know i say it most weeks but again thank you all very much for the very kind comments in the last episode it's always nice to hear your feedback and I've noticed quite a lot of people recently have been dropping messages, whether it be on Twitter or the uh, comments below, but mention that they actually are from the island or they're, they've been there many times before. So if you are one of those people who are watching this video with anticipation because you've been here before or you live on the island, pop up and say hello in the comments. It's always lovely to hear your thoughts and feedback on these builds because like I say, these aren't like for like builds in that sense, but I'm trying to recreate what I love about the Isle of Wight and add in my own little flair as well. It's uh, it's just a nice way I think of building. So if you are from the island or you've been here before, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what your favorite part of the island is. Next, this is the interesting part. Again, unfortunately, I didn't record everything on this particular part because getting this, the um, chairlifts working proved a very difficult job. I don't know whether it's because I was trying to cheat the system in the terms of what parts I was using, um, or whether I was doing it incorrectly at the start, but I couldn't actually get anything to work at first. It took a very long time to even get 
one of the chair lifts to go up and down. It took me a little while to even get one to spawn. So I eventually worked that out. Um, if you ask me how I did it, I probably wouldn't be able to say it exactly. <laughs> I tried a few different techniques and methods and I think the main issue I had was there was no road um, connected near to the actual main station. So that obviously caused a bit of issue. But we'll go back to the stair lifts very shortly. In the meantime, we've um, put down this custom car park terminal block as well. Um, very, well, it's very, very ironic again when you come to this location that you just pretty much drive past. You basically just pay to park in this particular area in real life, Isle of Wight, and that's your ticket to enjoy the area um, around here. And it's not just you're not just paying to come and you know see the attractions. You can go and walk around and see all these beautiful sights right over the other side of the island as you can just about see in the distance here the top half of the screen you can go right down to the very tip of the um, island have a look at all the beautiful views as well and that's one thing I'm really really looking forward to doing once we've built up all of this main core this main area and worked around it I'm really really excited to take some screenshots take some cinematics of the look that we've got because these white cliffs that we've had done by Mr Miyagi and uh, Abanya's um, texture decals just look outstanding. I, I just really want to show them off in a, you know, in a completed build area look because they do look good. And I probably will also re-record the intro um, cinematic shots because we have built on this area now. Um, so some of those screenshots and those cinematics can um, can now be updated and will look a lot more appealing. I think. Now we're moving on to laying down some of the buildings here and I was trying to get it as close to what I remember it being like on the island. Um, using procedure objects here to clip these building bits in together to make it look a bit more realistic and not blocky and out of shape. Again another perfect thing that PO is great for, not just doing all these complex builds that I've been doing previously but just doing little things like that. I mean, all I'd done there was tucked in the um, the walls and dragged them together to make it look a bit more appealing, I guess. I mean, I didn't have to do that. I could have left it. But for me personally, I like to do all these little extra bits just to make the um, make the build look a bit more realistic. For a little channel update as well, I just wanted to let you guys know that despite the whole situation with the world I have actually got a little bit more time on my hands for making videos and I am trying to put a few together in advance and believe it or not I'm actually almost three episodes ahead of myself and those three episodes are for the actual Isle of Wight as well <laughs> which is um, yeah quite exciting I know some of you have been watching the live streams and I have done a few little bits on there um, but I've kept one particular project which will be in three episodes time I believe behind closed doors I'm not going to show anyone that until we get to it because I think it was a really cool little project so I'm just going to leave it there um, and the, the plan moving forward like I said last time round is we'll be doing these last three episodes on the Isle of Wight and then we're going to be moving on to something a little bit different and then we'll be moving over to Monaco so the something different will probably come sooner than later you'll know about it um, probably next week actually yeah probably next week based on when this video is going out so keep an eye out on my Twitter for any updates and news and you'll see a very special video coming out shortly um, other than that we'll then be moving back onto Monaco and we'll probably sit on that for a couple of months and really try and move on with that um, I mean what I was thinking we could do is if I carry on working on Monaco um, on my own sort of time and then any live streams we could carry on with the Isle of Wight so that is one option because eh, I'll have to think about it to be honest because the difficulty is when you switch between the two games you have to keep changing the LUT and all this and all that so we'll see what happens maybe I maybe I live stream Monaco but I certainly still want to continue doing some live streams because I know you guys have been enjoying it I've really really enjoyed it it's been really fun and um, I mean it's it's just a nice, it's a nice feeling when you're live streaming because you can get input from people there and then, 
and it's just nice to be able to speak to the viewers, the people who watch you, people who can give you ideas. It's just a nice, a nice little community, and I'm really pleased with the community we have here on the channel, let alone the actual community of City Skylines. It is an incredible, incredible commit um, community that uh, not many games can really shout about, um, and that's a huge, you know. A huge bonus to everyone here involved in the game whether it's the developers or just the players it's just really nice but back into the build so you saw earlier that I was placing down some of the food and restaurants and bits and bobs and there is actually a little sort of children like go-kart area um, in this particular build so I thought I'd try and make my own <laughs> um, wasn't ideal um, I just wanted to make a very small, very basic one. So I used the tire walls um, and just made a very simple course. I mean, realistically, it's probably not big enough and the go-karts are probably a little bit too big that I put down a bit later on. Um, but, you know, it's something. It gives a nice little look um, and it's not obviously going to function because it's just props. But, you know, it's these little quirky things I like doing as well, just like the... Um, the golf course you're going to see shortly, well, mini golf that I put in as well, just to sort of build up the feel of this area. Um, and yeah, all in all, I think that was as good as we could have got it, really. I was at first thinking of trying to do my own little um, crazy golf, as we call it in the UK, um, but I kind of gave up on the idea because it was <laughs> it was rather difficult to try and create your own little course with grass and decals and all that so I found these on the workshop I think they've been on there for quite some time because I think I remember using these when I had done the British challenge which was probably about four years ago now or something ridiculous like that maybe three and a half years ago um, but they still work you know <laughs> there's not too much to a crazy golf course um, in that sense so the only thing that was a bit difficult was the land value here was a little bit a little bit shaky there wasn't you know it wasn't really flat so there was a bit of an issue with some of the um the holes sticking up a little bit but we got around that in the end and it was all all good and good and well um you would have also noticed as well that i have been using these little um port uh, well, i think they're what are they like lookout posts or some sort of security desk been using these quite a lot recently certainly in these mid these, these builds recently because they just work well there's not too many little like shack things that we can use as a sort of a pay desk or a kiosk so those actually ended up working quite nicely and to be fair the one there the hexagonally sort of shaped one we put down is quite a common look for crazy golf if you go to any sort of UK seaside resorts or something if there's a crazy golf course on the beachfront you can guarantee that there'll be some sort of little shed or you know construction that looks very similar to that anyway so again we're getting that uk vibe going as well which is always good and always fun to work with the next problem to try and solve was this stair lifts um, the issue i had is i wanted to create this really sharp drop down which is what it's like on the island itself but with the terraforming tools and options like that, it's very difficult to do. The best way around it is to use Ronix's, de uh, Ronix's networks here as well, the terrain forming networks. They really do work really well here because we can really force the land down and basically trick the game into um, yeah, accepting that's how it's going to be. And then you can raise out with the page up and page down function keys to really get the perfect angle going for you. And this was pretty much what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to have this sharp drop down. I wanted to make this particular area a little bit different in terms of the textures as well. So you'll see here, we're using a number of decals and I'm lowering a lot of it down. So it's very, very unnoticeable in that sense. I didn't want it to be too bright and white like the main cliff faces because they wouldn't be like that in terms of this part of the the cliff so I wanted to make it a bit more rough um, with a lot more sort of details and rocks about as well and also with the beach itself I wanted to kind of put some decals down to make it look a little bit less beautiful um, it's not a beach that people are going to come to with their um, bucket and spade it's you know, I wanted to give off this feeling where this is where the coloured sand is coming from. So I wanted to create some different types of colours 
across this sand and fill in some of these gaps with some more sort of cliff decals just to make it look a bit more interesting. So I think that worked out quite nice. I was happy of that. And the next step really was to try and to work out how we're gonna get a pathway down. So as well as the actual stair lift, obviously there is other means of getting down to this bottom pass. And it is a very interesting staircase, which takes you down to this part of the, uh, the beach. But it's one, there's no asset for the sort of staircase that I would need to try and get that to work. And secondly, because of how how rough and strange the drops are here on the terrain itself, trying to get a staircase, which you'll see you'll see shortly. I did leave it in there to sort of show the troubles I had um, to get the staircase to work. It wasn't really going to happen, so that was out the question. But we'll see how we get around that very shortly. Um, I put down some of these um, wooden sort of pier almost like footpaths um, which is kind of what it's like there and I thought it was a nice look as well so you get the cable cart and the chairs come down to this segment you get off um, and obviously the other part of the build there to the left hand side is where you can go and walk up the staircase as well so there's both options to get down I did also run an invisible path down there you'll see a bit later on um, to try and get people to walk down there but um, it's been a bit difficult, I must say. The fences obviously took a bit of time to put down, but they were really needed because this area is obviously very dangerous. You wanna have the fences all the way around to really block in this area. And then we went a little bit crazy on the foliage, but these are really, really good for this area. They look so, so good. And you'll see later on on the cinematics at the end, they up close, when you zoom right in and you've got your computer grinding through the frames, they do look amazing. Ronix has done a fantastic job with these and combining a few other bushes and the long grass together, I really want to create the look that it's very overgrown. Obviously the parts outside of this fence are never gonna be really cut down or treated because it's just been left to be, you know, for nature to take its cause as they say. Um, so I wanted to put down some decals as well um, to sort of make the area look a little bit more realistic some dirty areas as opposed to all the clean grass so that worked out really well i'm really happy of those combinations of grass and you remember going back when i was talking to taser about the combination of different trees and bushes and how important they are to a build this is what i think makes the look of this build so good it's those combination of trees bushes and the foliage really does make it pop against the whiteness of the cliffs as well so i'm not sure what it is um but me personally i think that really does hit the nail on the head i also noticed there was a couple of little cottages just off from this area i'm not sure if they are the housekeeping cottage or they are just actual people's homes just off the actual uh the uh park area but I wanted to put them in as well and it was a nice way of breaking up the combination of the fields one side and obviously this sort of pleasure park the other side. So they worked really well. I didn't want to detail it too much. It was purely just a little a little build here just to separate things up and just make things look a little bit more separate in their own little way. So those went down there and I think I'm going to use that technique a bit more over the island as well. As you can tell, we've still got a lot of area to fill up. I'm obviously not gonna fill up the whole thing. I don't think the game's gonna be able to allow me to do that, but doing these little builds, I think the detail in the buildings themselves are so good that you don't always need to do so much else to that. And obviously, when we're just doing large areas to fill the gaps in, it's not gonna be as detailed. Um, so it's more of a backdrop, is kind of where I'm thinking that's gonna work nicely. 
Next up, we used the new feature, or one of the new features, um, from the Move It mod, which was allowing you to change the color of a prop. The actual gates and fences here are this beautiful green, green color, so I wanted to try that out. I've never actually used this option yet, the painter option in Move It, and it's so easy to use. It really is. You pretty much click on the, on the prop you want, change the color, um, and place it down and it's you know you can copy and paste it do it like that it's perfect and it really did change the look of this area I must say and I have really been resorting to the network fences quite a lot recently because they are a lot easier to place down but I went back to the whole classic PLT mod and got myself familiar with that again and yeah it worked perfectly hand in hand so all's well that ends well on the fences front so yeah let me know what you think about that guys because i think it really does make a difference now we're not too far away now from the end of this episode before we do that i'm going to place down a few more of these trees i wanted to make things look a little bit more natural without the trees around here it just seemed a little bit too bland so we've added a few trees in, and here we go this is what i was talking about earlier so i was hoping to use some steps to really make this uh, interesting walkway um, all the way across and you'll see that I tried many techniques along the way I tried to use move it I tried to use procedure objects to extend some of them around etc etc and yeah you'll notice it doesn't quite work the steepness of the hill if I planned it um, against the angles of the staircases it would have worked and it would have looked really cool um, but it wasn't to be so you'll see this is my attempt of using these particular staircases and then I in the end resorted to well getting rid of those starting again and we went with I think it was Armesto's um, stone walls in the end and they they work really well as well I think um, I mean, all I was trying to get was this look, you know, this really nice vibe of a staircase floating its way down this very steep hill, um, contrasting against the stair lifts that are flying over your head. So that's what I was going for. And I hope in the cinematics that comes across well to you because there is some shots that I take in the cinematics that are probably one, some of my favorite. Um, and it is looking over the staircase, seeing the cable cars going overhead. And yeah, that really did make me smile when I put that together. I'm really happy with that. And on that note, I will leave you with the cinematics. Thank you all very much for your time. Let me know in the comments section how you think this video went and what you want to see next. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and all the best.